This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Says I just whipped your ass. This is my iron. You're gonna acknowledge me. It's that time for the weekend review here on the WWE podcast. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us here on this Sunday, September 15th, 2024. A lot to go over this week, as we do every week, with the return of Bret Hart, the return of Roman Reigns, the return of SmackDown to the USA Network. A WWE Undisputed Championship match. We have a new number one contender for the Intercontinental title. I think we all know the outcome of that one, but we still do. We've got a Hell in a Cell match coming up for Bad Blood as the Bad Blood card starts to take shape. There's a lot going on. A lot going on, and things are about to ramp up in a really big way as we get past Bad Blood, which is, I, I know I'm really looking forward to Bad Blood because of the fact that a lot of a lot of the programs that are going on right now are going to conclude. It's going to be violent. Hopefully there is actual blood in uh, one or two of the matches because I think it would add a a nice dramatization to the match, specifically the Drew McIntyre and CM Punk Hell in a Cell match that is going to take place 27 years to the day that the first Hell in a Cell match took place in Bad Blood of 97, which is just really awesome. So there's a lot to talk about tonight as we get through SmackDown. We get through through, uh, Raw. A, a, a little bit because the raw review was done, but we'll still touch on it. But before we get to all that, of course, I want to uh, do a couple things. Yes, I do want to give uh, a shout out to the latest patrons of the show. Even, even if you are on the free side of things, I do still want to give you a shout out. So I'm going to do that right now and give a shout out to Robert Blakely. Thank you so much for joining us over on the Patreon side of things. All right. Well, um, The other thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the need for fill-ins here. So the NXT spot for the foreseeable future is open. So those of you out there who are maybe considering getting into podcasting, have an external mic. You got to have an external mic. I don't want crappy sounding audio. If possible, please. (laughs) It's not even an option. You got to have an external mic. If you have an internal mic, it's not going to work. So some kind of external mic doesn't have, it doesn't need to be, you know, the the highest quality, but it's got to happen. And also just you're a big, you're a fan of wrestling and you're fairly well-spoken. And if you have previous audio experience, that's great. If you don't, you know, we can still give it a try and see what happens. But if you want to do the NXT, that's one spot. That'll be every Wednesday that the review would be due in an MP3 format. Um, Also, we do have a need for fill-in for SmackDown. Uh, Amanda's going to be away for a few weeks. So October 4th, 11th, and 18th. So those three weeks in October, those first three episodes of SmackDown, I will need someone to fill in if uh, if possible. So if you're interested in either of those, in the NXT or the SmackDown side of things, for the first three weeks of October, anyway, for SmackDown, It would be greatly appreciated. The NXT can really start as soon as this week if things work out. All right. So NXT is immediate. SmackDown is starting October 4th for three weeks. So that's uh, that's really what we need. And I hope somebody out there would uh, would would help us out. I mean, I could always cover it, but I'd prefer that I don't because I just I don't want to do a crappy job. And that's why I have co-hosts who do much better job than I would covering this stuff and have the time to do it. So where do you go to submit your application, so to speak? Easy. Mailbag at WWEpodcast.com. And the subject just puts, you know, whatever one you're interested in, XT host, SmackDown host. Again, SmackDown is for three weeks starting on October 4th, and the NXT can start as early as this week. But if you're interested, by all means, reach out and uh, get a hold of me, and we can chat and uh, see what happens. All right. So let's talk about it, guys. Bret Hart returned this week. That was really cool. I covered that in depth on on the Monday Night Raw review. And it was great to see him. You know, you never know with the way things are going today. I mean, hell, we just had a second a second attempt on Donald Trump's life today. 
which is just crazy that people have already forgotten about it. Like it's talked about and then the news is just going to forget about it. It just, it speaks not to get I'm not getting into politics, but it's for a larger point in that our news cycle just is constantly wham, 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 wham. You forget about the next thing. OK, even if it's a massive event, you move on to the next thing, you move on to the next thing. My point, though, is that you never know when you're going to see someone again. You just, you just don't know. You don't know. I mean, and so especially with the wrestling world. Obviously, our personal lives, uh, this is applicable too. But in the wrestling world, you just never know from week to week when you're going to see somebody. And with Bret Hart at, at his age, not that he's decrepit, it's just they aren't on often. And I do appreciate when they bring those stars on, uh, especially in Calgary for Bret Hart. That must have been a, a pretty special moment this past week. It still would have been kind of cool to see him put somebody in a sharpshooter for good old time's sake. Just some some uh, jobber of a, of a heel or something. But anyway, we also had... A big event on SmackDown, which was the return of Roman Reigns, which I don't even know if we should say return anymore. Is return the right word? Because at this point, we know his schedule, which is like, you know, show up once a week or once a month. Or if he shows up for two weeks, he's gone for five, you know, that kind of thing. And God bless him. You know, congrats on the the mega amount of money for minimal work. I, I don't mean that in a jerk kind of way. I mean that in all sincerity that he's earned that contract. So I'd have no ill will towards him at all. And actually, it's going to help him. It's going to become the source of his success that at the same time was actually a source of the of his uh, of the fans frustration when hit with him as a heel. It's, it's interesting, right? He's not changing his schedule. And yet the very thing that we hated about him uh, as champion is the thing that we wouldn't admit. But we do kind of love the fact that when he's there, it feels special. You take away the championship and bing, bang, boom. Wow. It's amazing how uh, how things change. But a big event did take place this week on SmackDown, as you heard in the SmackDown review, and that is Roman Reigns returns. But more importantly, we have a, I guess, a joining of forces for a common enemy against Solo. And Roman did kind of talk, but not to my satisfaction, which is ultimately... Of course, what WWE needs to do is satisfy me personally because that's the most important thing. And it it, it it was good to hear him talk that he says he's the only tribal chief, right? He's the original, but he's the only one. That's really all he said. Uh, it's like, okay, but are you and Solo ever going to talk face to face? That that would you know maybe they're saving that for their one on one match that has yet to happen. And they're building to that, and I appreciate that. We're not getting that right away. I'm a big, big believer in uh, in in slow burn, as you know. That there just still hasn't been any dialogue between them. You know, it's this is the first time Roman Reigns has said anything since returning six weeks ago, at the beginning of August for SummerSlam, which feels like four years ago. And so he said something. The crowd still ate it up. I do like his music. I know a lot of you don't. I like it. it it's even more dramatic than his previous. I didn't think there was anything wrong with this previous music. In fact, I thought he could have kept it. It didn't sound heelish at all. You know, sometimes you get a baby face turning heel or vice versa, and the music doesn't really jive with their new persona. In this case, I feel like his old music was just fine. It was really good. It was iconic. And then they change it, which luckily for them, I think it is still just as good, if not in some ways a little better. But I don't, I don't know. I didn't see the need for it. That said, I know some of you really get into the music part of the of WWE and the entrance music. A couple of our patrons I know do. I think Freeman, you're one of them. But and 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 that's awesome. But for me, it's just something I've noticed with his music. I didn't hate it. I thought it was just fine. And his new music, I do do enjoy. And it, the only thing is with that music, it does warrant and sound like a very long entrance. You don't even need to see the entrance to know that based on the song, it's going to be a long entrance. <laughs> very dramatic, very uh, slow motion in ways. And that's just been the Roman Reigns entrance lately. But it does still look weird with him coming out without the championship. I noticed that this past week on SmackDown too. It, it just feels weird with him not carrying the championship. You have to remember, oh yeah, uh, Cody has it. And it's, I'm sorry. It's still to me with Cody carrying the belt and Roman standing next to him. It doesn't feel like Cody should be holding that belt based on maybe it's because we've seen this visual so many times with Roman holding the belt that my mind's holding on to that image. 
it just doesn't it doesn't jive with me. Roman feels like the champion, even though he doesn't have a belt. And, you know, Cody's still suspicious of Roman. And I I do appreciate that part of his character. And then he didn't come out in a suit. That was also appreciated. And, you know, th- that his character should be suspicious of Roman and vice versa. That I did appreciate. It's like, you know, these two were bitter enemies for the better part of two years. And you it would have made little sense that all of a sudden, you know, they're hugging and hugging and out and, and, and you know, uh, giving each other, you know, whisper sweet nothings in their ear. You know, like I don't mean to be so dramatic, but you, you know what I mean, right? Sometimes that happens where all of a sudden you have somebody flip and they go from being this monstrous character to, you know, hugging it out or just totally changing who they are. And I, I didn't I, I don't like when that happens. This is a much more natural fit. They realize that they do have a common enemy in Solo and that rogue bloodline. Therefore, they need to combine their forces. Uh, they need to do a little bit of, um, you know, Captain Hero. Did I get that right? For those of you who know what Captain Hero is or Captain Planet, I'm sorry, Captain Planet. I I, I got to get it right. It's Captain Planet uh, with earth, fire, wind, water, heart, right? All the elements. So they need to combine their, their powers to, to fight the evil, uh, the evil bloodline. And I think it's a smart move. They're suspicious of each other, still giving each other aggressive looks. But there's no need to have these two come to blows at all. There's no need at Bad Blood to have these two in any capacity, have any mis- miscommunication or any kind of... Well, if they do, it shouldn't lead to a match anyway. These two have fought their battle. It is long over. They could revisit it in maybe a year or two just for you know old time's sake, and maybe Cody's a heel at that point. Who knows? But with The Rock impending, his, re- his impending return, with Jimmy and Jay about to come into the fray, and Paul Heyman in tow, you know that this is not going to be in their benefit to even explore again Roman and uh, Roman versus Cody Rhodes. I mean, we've been down that road enough. They are not. They aren't in in each other's, you know, uh, any in each other's arenas right now. They're going on separate paths. You know, Randy Orton. Or I'm sorry, Randy. Yeah, well, actually, Randy Orton probably will be the next opponent for Cody. I keep saying that. But that looks to be the case. Somebody's got to turn after we, what we saw in SmackDown, and we'll get to that a little bit later too, with Randy Orton and 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 uh, and teaming with Kevin Owens to take on a Town Town Under that completely got squashed. By the way, and we'll talk about that. But with Cody going a different direction, he cannot continue with the Bloodline. I mean, that's that's not his arena anymore. That's not his focal point. It should not be. We've kind of bound down that road, and it's time to move on. This is now Roman's fight to fight. And with the rock coming back and the impending return of the OG bloodline in full, that's really where the story is at. That's where people want it to go. And that's where it's headed. I mean, it's slowly, slowly coming together. And early prediction, I fully expect the bloodline to beat Roman and Cody at the next event because it would then trigger the need for a numbers advantage to even itself out. Right. If, if the bloodline are able to, to beat Roman and Cody because of the numbers game, then you're sitting there going, oh, man, come on, man. Roman needs help. He's got to. Where's Jimmy? Where's Jay? And eventually maybe Sami Zayn. You know, where, where are they? And then Roman over the, the coming weeks ends up slowly getting those after again, post bad blood, getting those uh, allies back. You know, after they beat down Roman, maybe we'll we'll see Roman more often bu- building to Survivor Series because this year's Survivor Series is going to be huge in Vancouver. If you have tickets, I'm jealous. It's going to be massive, but I think that that's how it's going to play out. I mean, that's going to build towards that bloodline versus bloodline match at Survivor Series. I just can't see it any other way. Which means Sammy and Jay over on Raw, they aren't going to be doing a whole lot. At least anything that's going to result in a long-term story and yes Sami Zayn and Gunther of course we know there is little to no chance of Sami Zayn winning it's a matter of how good is the story you know another underdog from the underground fight despite how much Sami wants to tell us he's not an underdog anymore he still feels like he is and he is in this match so that that should still be fun but we all know that this is not what the destination is for both Sami and Jay 
that it is for the return of the bloodline. That's to me where it's headed to even out the Solo Sokoa, Jacob Fatu and company uh, really just bastardization of the bloodline. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get talking a little bit more specifically about this week in WWE. Randy Orton, I talked about a little bit earlier, uh, does return. He had a previously whoever um, Kevin Owens chose to be his partner. I forget the name of the guy. I have to look at the review, but he got cheers out of like kind of pity cheers. Uh, the, the fans just got behind him, which is fun because they're just this kind of common wrestler that no one knew you know, starts to get the crowd behind him. And then Kevin Owens gets told by the ring announcer that no, 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 he's here. And Kevin Owens stuns his, stuns his partner, which was funny, but the crowd was like, uh, we kind of like this guy. And then Randy Orton comes out, does what he does. Power slam, snap power slam, the middle row of the hanging, uh, rope DDT. And then Kevin Owens is mimicking the Randy Orton, uh, move set. I guess that was his, like his deal on Friday night was to mimic the Randy Orton uh, move set, which it's fine. It just doesn't feel very Kevin Owensy. You know, he does the the pounding of the mat and then hits a stunner while Randy Orton hits an RKO, gets a one, two, three, and the victory. And I was actually waiting. It looked like somebody was going to strike somebody at the end of that match. It didn't happen. And I just keep waiting for Randy, man. Yeah, he's just kind of floating out there doing his Randy thing. Being a just a fun legacy star, and I know there's a lot more in him that he could he would love to give and can give. And if it doesn't happen after Bad Blood, I do worry that it's not going to happen until after WrestleMania next year, unless they want to go Randy Cody at Mania, which I'm all for more so than the Rock and Cody, which I have been very clear in this show. I have no interest in at all, really. But they know, you know they're going to get to that because of the way that The Rock left Raw, if you remember the Monday Night Raw for WrestleMania. It, it was pretty much saying, hey, we're going to get to this match when The Rock comes back. So it's been, what, five months since The Rock's been back? About, yeah, five months. So he's been gone for five. Uh, he'll be back probably right at Survivor Series or shortly thereafter. You'll see a Randy, or I'm sorry, a, a Rock return. And you know he's going to be siding with Solo. It only makes sense. Solo has to be revealed to have, you know, The Rock be the guy that's in charge of his side while Roman's in charge of his side. And that's, to me, the only way you do this. It's the only way you do this. So we've been talking about this for six months on the show. I feel like I'm saying this every week. But now, it's, it's again, it's starting to come together. And we're all waiting for it. We're all ready for it. So, uh, yeah, A Town Down Under, by the way, getting squashed. Uh, what are we doing with them? Are, are we doing this or are we not? Is this going to be a thing or is it not? Are we turning Austin Theory babyface or are we not? What's happening? They're kind of, right now, the resident enhancement talent. And I hate saying that because they're both super talented. I just, I don't know what we're doing with them. That was a squash victory by Randy and KO. The no heat whatsoever on the that team, which it's a bit concerning. Maybe they just didn't have the time. And then uh, whatever the case, I really think that they should have done a little bit more with them on Friday night, but I don't know the long-term plan for them. I, don't, I would imagine it's with the babyface turn of Austin Theory that we've all been expecting with Grayson Waller as the heel, but WWE... By default or default, which one do you guys say? Default or default? I don't know. Or Some people say like nucle- nuclear instead of nuclear. That's incorrect. If you say nuclear, stop listening to the show. Like you are banned. But and I don't know where I'm going with this. My point about Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, I would like them to do something. But again, I also understand that WWE just always needs tag teams. All the time, just as I would say, I guess by default, but uh, they just do because they're always seemingly out of tag teams to challenge for championships, particularly in the women's division, of course. So we'll see where they go with that. They got to come. They got to come up with some kind of finality with uh, with Grayson Waller and Austin Theory. Uh, I'm not going to, I guess, belabor the point, but 
I, I don't really ever talk about them, but this week it really got noticed uh, for me anyway. But all right, we did have a WWE Undisputed Championship match on SmackDown too, as as Amanda has covered on in her uh, her opinion and in her analysis. And the match I thought was good. I mean, Cody Rhodes does what he does. He hits his crossroads, and either Tama Tonga or Tonga Lo, one of them takes it like their you know their necks broken, and like spikes their head into the mat. Yikes, bro! I mean, I, I hope it's not on purpose that he does that because there's no need to take it like that. While it does look better than the horrible way that most people take it, because it's just generally a bad move. I think it's just it's a horrible looking finish is that that he doesn't do that on purpose. It's just no need to do that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just genuinely concerned for his safety. But the match itself with the cage is good. You know, Roman Reigns coming to the rescue was fun, Getting uh, coming face-to-face with Jacob Fatu in the ring. It does create some anticipation for the tag team match that's going to take place at Bad Blood, aptly named for this program as well. This 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 PLE is aptly named for a lot of things going on at this of uh, this PLE, which is great. And it was a nice little preview. And Jacob Fatu is set to be the and already is the heavy of the bloodline. He is already the right hand man of Solo Sokoa. And he'll be hopefully a breakout star for WWE, not just for the new bloodline or if he eventually turns on Solo, but for just the long term. And I think. That's ultimately what the goal is, right? Make big stars out of out of groups. That's why groups are formed. To they're they're built to collapse because the idea is to build new stars, which you can only do usually if if the group breaks up. So that'll be fun as well with Solo and Fatu when those two go face to face. Roman gets a spear. Cody, as as I said, hits a crossroads, but also does retain the championship. As I mean, as absolutely no one predicted Cody to lose that. But I think it was also a way to not only pop a rating on SmackDown, make it a big deal that SmackDown is back on USA, put their best foot forward, which I all agree with, and I understand why they do it. But also the positioning of the championship match on the show was one that would tell you no chance of Cody dropping the belts here. Um, And this also got the Rhodes bloodline championship opportunity storyline complete. I think that with this solo is now done challenging for that championship at least in the short term and it is now all about personal blood pun intended or bad blood with roman and eventually the rest of the crew that will join him as i've said so all right i've spent a lot of time on this story but let's uh let's continue on and let's talk about the piper niven and meachin match meachin gets the victory here in two minutes she had uh, she hit eat defeat, which <laughs> that's the name of her move, which uh, I kind of like clever. But is it almost too clever? I don't know. Eat defeat. That's the name of the move. Maybe she, did she just come up with this? Meechin? It's clever. Where Who comes up with this stuff? So it's it, there's a couple ways to, to look at that, right? Like eat defeat as in victory and defeat or it's eat the feet like eat my feet. I mean, that's, it's great. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I thought I was annoyed with it, but more I look at it, the more I'm like, that, that was, that's pretty damn clever. Almost as clever. Not that I've ever talked about this girl on the show, the hawk to a girl that is just, I mean, she's, she's taken over the world at this point between going on, you know, the top rated podcasts she's throwing out first pitches at MLB games sponsorships all over the place I mean she's at music festivals getting paid tens of thousands to host things um, you know all for just two words she's got her own podcast now which is very clever cleverly named talk to a I mean that's great very very well done you know talk to a so that's, uh, I mean, that's perfect. I mean, she's got her own professionally done set. I mean, imagine your life turns around on a drunken night with a YouTube interview. You're coming out of a bar. You're in Nashville. I haven't been there, which, by the way, I need to. Um, you, you come out 
and you're just being interviewed and you know you, you say two words and the next thing you know you wake up and your whole life's changed for the better and not all better there's obviously negatives that come with stardom but you immediately have you never have to worry about money again you just say two words and you're an instant sensation I mean, it's just incredible now the question is does she have anything of value to offer beyond her being yes she's an attractive young lady she has clearly a personality but does she have any insight does she have any wisdom to offer on this podcast you know she's going to be talking about relationships apparently she's going to be talking about relationships and giving relationship advice I, i'm sorry I, I, i'm not going to be listening to any relationship advice from a single 21 year old girl no insult to her i was 21 once and you think you know what you're talking about until you get to be 39 or 40 like me then you're like yeah that was uh that that's that was not the best thing i did right i mean the stupid things i did a lot of the dumb things I did lasted well into my 20s and my 30s, you know? So it's no, no fault of her own. I'm not slamming her at all. Haley Welsh, she, you know, seems like a nice girl, whatever. And I'm not jealous of her success. She, she's struck gold by doing absolutely nothing, but good for her. Um, but it's just more of the fact of, you know, it's funny. She's going to be talking about things that she really has no experience in. As At 21 years old, you simply can't. You cannot have the insight that comes with experience. So anyway, maybe, I mean, maybe she'll, maybe it'll turn out to be a success and I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will because of the massive following she has, but yeah, that, that's, that's my take on the, the Hawk to a girl. I could talk more about it, but this is a wrestling show. So there's your Hawk to a segment of the week. All right. Meechin gets a victory over Piper Niven here. And again, I, I was surprised at the outcome. I was surprised how quickly it happened, but I'm actually thinking this is a good thing i'm not i'm not saying it's a good thing that the matches continue to be short for the women that's not good but the fact that meachin got a clean victory over somebody who you thought was a favorite to win where meachin has been a background figure for quite some time has had quick little glimpses here and there but this was easily the biggest victory of her wwe career so do they make something out of this maybe maybe um after the match though Chelsea got involved, Chelsea, uh, Chelsea Green, and attacked Meechin from behind. Piper then hit a running senton, landed an unpretty her onto a trash can, and that's it. So it looks like this rivalry is not over. But all right. All right, then we have Bailey and or I'm sorry, Naya in the ring. She talked about her accomplishments since returning to WWE. She then said she was told by Nick Aldis that she was to defend her title at Bad Blood, and Nia talked about winning Queen of the Ring in the WWE Women's Championship and said she couldn't care less who her opponent was at Bad Blood because she would annihilate them. <laughs> he he. Q Bailey, she comes out, she uh, and then she complimented Nia on having the best year of her career, but she said that the bar was pretty low. It's very true. She demanded her rematch at Bad Blood, but Nia said she was not in a place to make demands. Nia joked that she didn't need a, a posse like Bailey did with damage control, and Bailey responded that she didn't need them to win the title at WrestleMania. And Bailey wondered if whatever she said had going on with Tiffany was a po- uh, with Tiffany was a posse, uh, which was Tiffany's cue to come out. And then Bailey then uh, said that. Um, Beat, uh, she had beaten Tiffany last week and Naya was irritated and she threatened Bailey with a beat down, at which point Naomi comes out and said, if they wanted a fight, let's glow. <sighs> Groan. N- uh, Naya ended up proposing a tag team match for the four of them next week. And if one of them wins, they get a title shot at Naya. But if they lose the women, the woman that gets pinned leaves smack down forever. I like this. I like this uh, because it allows somebody to become a free agent. Who could that person be? What about, uh, what about Naomi? Naomi is something to do. I think Bailey is a nice fit on SmackDown right now. SmackDown needs female stars, especially with Charlotte still inexplicably out as I keep talking about, but she's out and, I'm not sure upon what her return date is. 
Don't listen to me. I'm horrible, apparently, at predicting Charlotte's return. I've been talking about it for two months now, and I get embarrassed every time I predict it, so I'm just going to stop predicting it. But I think for Naomi, who needs a bit of a reset again, going to Raw would be the best thing for her. She could reunite with both Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. I think having those three women together, there was something there. Maybe they do form a faction that is a little bit more long-standing and a little more tolerable than what the Jade and Bianca chemistry is right now on camera, which is starting to become insufferable. It's not there yet, but it's well on its way. Like it's on the, it's on the highway. It's on the fast lane. It's in the left lane of the highway that leads to insufferability. We're close. We're closing in. We're in the vicinity. (laughs) And I think Naomi could help a little bit in that regard. And you'd have a faction. Once you get three, three's a crowd. You're in a different territory. So perhaps that's what they do. And Naomi, it's a great way to get Naomi off of SmackDown, which they're not, let's be honest, they're not doing anything with her, sadly. Nothing. So, I mean, really after she returned to the Rumble, like they haven't done jack with her other than her brief moments with Jade and Bianca, which were her most memorable. So, all right. Again, with with Bailey challenging Nia, though, which is probably going to be happening at at Bad Blood, doesn't really do anything for me. And the reason is, sure, beyond a Charlotte return that could happen in again, I don't know. I'm not making any predictions, but it's a good place for Charlotte to return at Bad Blood. Bailey, uh, once again, has almost no chance, almost no chance of beating Nia Jax, who's just getting going here. So another one of those, yeah, not interesting because there's no chance type of matchups. But I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I just don't see another opponent for Nia that makes any kind of sense. All right. Andrade versus Carmelo Hayes. This match was as advertised, about 10 minutes long, fast-paced, ultra-athletic. Andre uh, Andrade ends up beating Carmelo Hayes, and it was with the message spitting neckbreaker from the second rope that was, I mean, that looked beautiful. What a, what a great move, and a move that is deserving of a finish. You know, a lot of moves you see that just are, are just pathetic for finishing maneuvers. This is not one of them. I'm glad it was one and done. It didn't have a kick out. It shouldn't. High risk here. I mean, just look at that maneuver. And one wrong move to the left, right, up or down, and it's catastrophic. I mean, you just sometimes you look at these matches and and sometimes you see moves that are done and you're like, you know, one, the margin for error, the margin for error in so many moves these days is very 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 small which scares you as a fan or if it doesn't it should because if you just one wrong move one wrong slip the the ropes are you know wet from sweat or oil or whatever the case and 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 somebody's you know in a wheelchair for the rest of their life or worse you know and it just gives me more of a respect sometimes it brings you back down to earth when you see certain things and Not that I was freaking out during this match. It just, it quickly passed in my mind that we as fans just take for granted so much of what we see in the ring and don't know that or forget to be reminded that, that these men and women's lives are literally on the line every single time they step in the ring. You take it for granted that, oh, it's a work and yeah, it is. Sure, we know that, but the physicality is real, you know, like the risk is real. And that's the one drawback. Even if you love today's style of wrestling, which is much more focused on athletics and gymnastics and cool moves and maneuvers. And uh, and that's great. It's not my cup of tea. I appreciate it, but I don't, I don't prefer that over just great storytelling and deep larger than life characters. That's where I live, but uh, it's not up to me to, to, guide where the wrestling fans go or guide what WWE should do, of course. But my point is, though, that today's style of wrestling is inherently higher risk because of the the maneuvers that are done today that those just 20, 30 years ago wouldn't have even dreamed of doing in the ring. It's turned to a much more athletic-based 
competition than the previous generation. And so anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but I guess to sum it up, appreciate what you see in the ring because these men and women are putting their lives literally on the line, their livelihood, you know, all right. Enough of that sappy crap. Let's um, let's move on. And yeah, I talked about the Cody Rhodes and the the contract signing. Roman signed it. Cody signed it. It's official for Bad Blood in terms of the tag team match. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. And that's it for uh, SmackDown. Now, for the Monday Night Raw side of things, as I said, we had the return of Bret Hart. Always cool, and it makes me really want to go back and watch a lot of his matches. I have to say. It really, it really does. And we had, let's see, the, oh, the kick-ass, as I mentioned on the Monday Night Raw review, I don't feel any different about it nearly a week later. The eight-man tag team match that was a mixed tag street fight between American Maid and the Wyatt Six, that was a great way to start off Raw. All eight men, I remember saying this, and I stick by it, that was a PLE quality and PLE worthy match. What a great way to, to kick off the the show, get right into some 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 uh, insanely physical wrestling, make it no rules, tables involved, all this stuff, chairs, you know, everything, and get the crowd on their feet. Starts out hot. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So I really appreciated that from uh, from Triple H and his team over on Raw. And I will say this too. I didn't talk about the Triple H appearance on SmackDown. I guess if you're in the arena, it's different. You can appreciate what Triple H has meant to the company over the last 30 years. He's been there in ring contributions. Now, uh, obviously over the last seven plus years, much more behind the scenes and now in charge of creative, but I don't know. (laughs) Do I need to see Triple H every time there's an, an anniversary or a change of network or, you know, like a, to open a, a PLE or like, I don't know. I, I like Triple H. I, I really do. I, Paul Levesque seems like a good guy. Um, Maybe you guys feel differently about this, but at this point, it seems a little bit self-serving. You know, he's not there to do anything, but just ask us if we're ready. Yeah. Okay. I got it. <laughs> Triple H, we, we, we got it. We know you're out here to cut a quick promo that's about 30 seconds that is simply about asking us if we're ready. Yes, yes, we're ready. We're ready. Okay, you know, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit a little bit burned out of seeing Triple H in that particular role of opening up a show. But, hey. The guy is burning himself out or burning the candle at both ends. I'm sure he's got kids. He's got a wife on top of running creative that probably doesn't have an off day or off hour, much less. It's just something as a very selfish and superficial fan. I'm kind of uh, burned out of seeing Triple H every single time that there's a moderate change in what's going on or there's a big PLE or whatever. Like, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm sure some of you write in the mailbag this week. No, oh, I heard you talk about the Triple H stuff and, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It, it's it's really not. But how many times over the last six months have we seen Triple H open shows or whatever? Uh, it's just it seems self-serving. But who am I? All right. So what else happened on Raw? We had the just see another, I think, solid performance from Joe Tessitore. Oh, I want to call him Tessitore. Mm. Uh, Joe, Tess- Joe Tessitore and Barrett, who I think did a solid job again on Monday Night Raw. He's not Pat McAfee. I'll continue to say that. He's not Pat McAfee. He's Joe Tessitore. And I think they did a solid job. But we got Bianca and Jade versus Albafire and Isla Dawn for the women's tag team titles. And in six and a half minutes, Bianca and Jade win as is most of their matches. If you've seen one match of them or one tag team match with J.D. Bianca, you've pretty much seen them all. And they're capable of more, but it's really incumbent upon Jade Cargill's progression inside the ring and outside the ring as to 
when we'll see something different and when we'll see this team potentially split. Will Naomi come over? Well, all that, you know, we'll see. But I, this Jade and Bianca team is, as I've said, on the road to insufferability. They're getting there. So moving on, Bret Hart comes out. Moment of the night was Gunther who confronted Bret Hart and he told Bret Hart that his uh, Bret Hart's his second favorite wrestler only, uh, well, only second to, obviously, his favorite wrestler of all time, Bill Goldberg. I mean, I thought like most of you who was going to say Shawn Michaels, which still would have gotten a massive, uh, you know, a massive pop in the other direction. People hate, still hate, and will forever hate Shawn Michaels in Canada because of the Montreal screw job. I mean, how many years ago was that? <laughs> that was 27 years ago, too. I mean, my God. But it's still, for me, uh, just a, a perfect response. Bill Goldberg was a oh, great. What a, what a, I mean, Gunther is just the man. I, I love his character so much. Love it. All right, Dom Mysterio versus Dragon Lee. And Dom beats Dragon Lee in eight minutes. We had, let's see, Natalia Zelina and like uh, Lyra Valkyria versus Pure, Pure Fusion Collective. Sonya Deville, Shayna Baszler, Zoe Sark. This was a six and a half minute match that ended with the uh, team of Natalia, Zelina, and Ly- Lyra getting a victory here. A lot of it obviously has to do with the fact that That they're in Calgary, or they were, with Natalia there. You knew that was uh, probably going to happen. But, all right, moving on. We had McIntyre run down CM Punk and then go aggressively after Wade Barrett, who confronted him as well. No, no, nothing physical. It was, uh, you know, it was exchanged between the men who are good friends. And we had Adam Pierce set up Hell in a Cell between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre at Bad Blood, a match that is surely going to be violent, surely should have blood, and surely should end this rivalry. Dating back all the way to January of 2024 until now. Yes, the six months of it was injured, uh, Punk being injured, but... Uh, they still found a way even during the injury and through the injury for punk to be involved, which is really just, I mean, incredible that they were able to do that. And that's a credit to WWE, a credit to punk and credit to Drew McIntyre for keeping us interested from the moment that CM Punk was injured with the uh, future shock DDT triceps tear in the Royal rumble all the way till now continuing to, you know, make this an interesting story. It's 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 an admirable eight months, admirable as hell, and I think this is a match that'll be uh, could easily main event the show. You can make an argument for it ending bad blood, given it's hell in a cell, and given these two uh, the, the the intensity of the rivalry, the fact is a blow off match. There's a strong case to make this end the show, but do I think it's going to end the show? <laughs> probably not. The Roman match with Cody against Solo and Jacob Fatu will probably be the one to end the show simply because it's Roman's return to the ring. Maybe there's a big return of The Rock at the end of that. Maybe. I'm not predicting it, but that kind of thing. You know, so. All right. So Helena Cell's back, baby. And boy, doesn't it feel special now? Instead of it having just built into the calendar when it's a, a stipulation instead of just a PLE that's predictably on the calendar. I love it. All right, Finn Balor and Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio beats Finn Balor by DQ in about nine minutes. And then after that match, Balor dropkick Rey. And then we have uh, Balor coming back in. He got pretty vicious with with Rey, you know, throwing him into the LED board and so forth. So uh, the, the finish of this was the five count DQ finish, which you almost never see. You know, the referee tells you you got five seconds to break the hold, and if you don't, you're DQ'd. You never see that, but this was a DQ with the five count finish. All right, some Braun Breaker jaw jacking that he's going to just victimize whoever wins, which yeah, didn't really do much for anybody, but it was nice to see Breaker there at least. And then we get the fatal four way for the shot at the Intercontinental title. This match 
as expected, had Jey Uso win, and he should have. Because Jey Uso is a guy, even though you know he's not going to win because of what he has coming up on SmackDown and how they get him to SmackDown and Sammy to SmackDown is another story. Hell, they got Randy to Raw, as I said before. I mean, they, they just do things with no explanation. But they could easily get him to Raw or from to SmackDown with a quick explanation that he's being rented to SmackDown or he's being temporarily allowed access because of extenuating circumstances. Just anything. Give us any kind of nonsense. But hopefully they give us just something out of respect. But Jay winning here, facing Braun Breaker for the Intercontinental title is fun. Is it going to really make anyone's mind up that Jay's going to win the IC title? No, because of two factors. One, Jay is clearly about to en- envelop himself into the storyline with the bloodline. And two, Braun Breaker just won the damn thing. And they're trying to make him a star. You don't make him a star by having him drop it quickly thereafter. So that, 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 there's two big things working against Jay on that. But I do hope for Jay that in 2025, there is singles gold. You know, that that I think is something he needs to absolutely uh, you know, achieve in 2025. So that's my uh, that's my take. But all right, guys, thank you so much for listening again. As I said in the beginning of the show, if you are interested in the NXT review show starting literally this week, I'd appreciate it if you reach out to me. Mailbag at WWEpodcast.com. Please be 18 years or older. I feel like I'm one of those voices you hear right on the show. Must be 18 years or older. You know, that that voice that comes on when there's like those all the fine print. The guy has to like read 15 paragraphs in four seconds. I'm like that guy. But really, I'd like you to be over 18 years old, please. Also, big you have to be a fan of wrestling. That kind of is a give it if you're listening to the show. Also, please have an external mic and timeliness. And uh, that's really what I ask for for NXT. Same thing goes for the SmackDown side of things. That, again, starts October 4th for three weeks only. Uh, Amanda will be uh, unavailable during those times. So do ask for your help if you're interested in joining the show to be a contributor for NXT and or SmackDown for the aforementioned times. I really appreciate it. If not, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or on Apple. You guys can go ad-free at patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Get an ad-free experience and do it for free. There's a lot of free memberships uh, over there and trial memberships for a week. A lot of you are trying this out. Some of you stick with us. Some of you don't, but that's the nature of it. Same with Apple. One week for free on Apple Podcasts if you want to try it before you buy it and uh, get yourself an ad-free experience there too. So thank you so much, everybody. I do appreciate all of your support, and I'll be back on Tuesday for your Raw review. Until then, take care. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.